Okay guys, great job getting through that first qualifying round. That first leg wasn't the best, but we made up for it in the second leg. And I hope you guys are hungry for success, because we're off to hungry to take on Malte Hava. And let's see if it's feeding time. I want to make a big statement here, boys. Come on. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 84 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode, the second qualifying round of the Champions League where we take on Hungary's Mol Feheba to try and make our way into the Champions League for the second straight season. We've also got a little bit of a roundup of the end of the transfer window and later in the episode we'll have a look at how the other Icelandic teams are going in Conference League qualifying. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this Builder Nation save, then also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But before we do get into a preview of this tie coming up against Mol Fehava, we will have a look at our transfer business that we have done to round up this window, our last window for 2028 here. In Iceland, if you did miss our previous transfer work and that first qualifying round tie at the end of last week, I'll leave a link to that over in the top right corner. No more incomings since the end of last week, but we have made a few sales, a few players who we didn't need anymore after doing our squad registration for the Champions League. Two sales, one youngster and one player who we haven't had at the club for very long, and that player was Rana Sigurd Bjornsson. We got him on a free transfer after he did decide to leave HK a few seasons ago was a decent backup left back option for us but after bringing Jorge to the club we have more than enough homegrown nation players and with only three star potential when he was at the club and two and a half star current ability I thought we should give that game time to Jorge over Sigurd Bjornsson he has left for Hellas Verona a club who are always after a lot of our players and he has left us for a hundred thousand pounds to go to the Silly R in Italy and the other sale that we did make was a young player in our under-19s who didn't really have the potential to end up featuring for the first team anyway. So we sold him to Breda Blick and that was Rafan Gislason. He is a right midfielder and he has gone to Breda Blick for £10,000. Could rise up to £13,000. Looks like a decent bit of money for a player of his quality at 18 years old. And that does wrap up our transfer window getting rid of one left back so that Jorge can get a little bit of more game time in the first team. But before we get into a preview of our opposition in today's episode, we have just played the one game since the end of last week. It was in the Molka Bikarin in the fourth round. We took on Glotta and picked up a fairly comfortable 2-0 win here with the rotation team first half goals to Musi Martins and Frederick Larson. And that means that we make our way through to the quarter final, a big tie taking on HK there right before we do take them on in the league only a few days later but we are still on for a domestic treble and a quick look at the league table going into the game and between those games in today's episode which is against Cordringa top versus bottom it's a game we absolutely should be winning but we are seven points clear halfway for our season and could go 10 points clear with a game in hand just over the halfway stage of the season so definitely still in a very good position to be winning the treble but today we are taking on Mol Fehava of Hungary in the second qualifying round of the Champions League. They're a club with a slightly higher reputation than us, albeit not quite sure why ours hasn't risen to that level after making the Conference League final a few seasons ago now. But I do still think this is a team we should be capable of beating, even though they did win their first qualifying round tie very comfortably over Julita off the back of two 6 0 victories. Hopefully, we provide much sterner opposition for the team who currently find themselves mid-table on the Hungarian League, albeit that is because that hasn't started yet, so don't pay too much attention to that, but they are predicted to finish first after winning that league last season, of course, with us being on the champion's path side of the draw, something else to keep an eye out on here in the second qualifying round. We have had the draw for the third qualifying round. It's actually going to be potentially a little bit of a tricky one because we are taking on the winner of the tie between Maccabi Tel Aviv and Hammerby. That could be a very interesting tie, that one, two teams 
who tend to be thereabouts towards later stages of Champions League qualifying. So that should be a very interesting tie for the third qualifying round of the Champions League should we make our way past Molfehava in today's episode. But we go into this one with no serious first team injuries, just Stamatis Chatzakis out for one more day with a bruised fire. So that just means that we've changed a few things up for our left back options on the bench. And hopefully we can back up our performance from the second leg of that first qualifying round in the first league here away from home of the second round. And we'll come back shortly from the Olino Sosto in Hungary for the first league here against Molfehava. And here are the team sheets for this first league. Not going to pay too much attention to our oppositions. It doesn't look like they have too many familiar names in their lineup. Staying 11-wise, we are first choice. Just that one change on the bench with that slight injury to Chatzakis. That means that Jorge could get some game time here in the Champions League qualifiers off the bench. But very happy with this team. Hopefully, we can pick up a good result to take into the home league. And four minutes gone, we do have an early corner after picking up early yellow cards here too. Nygaard and Caviglia, and Nygaard will pick up an assist yet again. Polo there at the near post. He has looked very dangerous there since coming into the squad at the start of the season, replacing our existing centre-backs of Corbo and Mbiyama with him and De Plisco. And we go 1-0 up here, nice and early. Up to the 22-minute mark for our next highlight is a free kick, which Nygaard takes. They do head it away but only out as far as Gautasson. Still picking up yellow cards in this one, which isn't ideal, but hopefully we can manage it. It is now Alejandro Meza also on a yellow card. We were briefly on the attack there, but they did clear the danger, albeit a poor pass there from one of the Hungarian opposition's players. And Patrick Nygaard makes his way down the right-hand side, tries to pick out Chaka Traore there at the far post. They don't deal with that ball Dumol Fehavar and Chaka is back in position. Can he square this for someone? He does. Benjamin Rubio on the 23 minute mark with his 22nd goal of the season. This is a much better performance in the first leg than it was in the first qualifying round at the end of last week. Looking like we are in our gear well and truly this time. Good little bit of work there from Chaka Traore to just turn his man and squares that nicely for Rubio. Nice finish into the bottom right corner. And it is Volsunga 2, Molfehavar nil after 23 minutes of the second qualifying round first tight. And not too long off the back of that highlight. We do have another one here. And Nicolusi picks out Anasom with a great run. Forces a good save there though. Out of the Molfehavar goalkeeper. He must have been on side. I thought he might have just been a stride off there. But the highlight did continue and it is a corner. We'll see if we can pick out Polo again there. At the near post, we can't 2-0 coming up to the half hour mark of the first league. And 33 minutes gone, we are back in position, albeit this time having to play out from inside our own half. But so far, this has been a good start to this time. Benjamin Rubio just gets beyond his man there. Ian Carlo in space down the right-hand side. We'll pick out Chaka there at the far post. His header just goes wide and it's still 2-0 in our favour. And only a few minutes later, this time it could potentially be a highlight for our opposition as Molfehavar. Try and get something going here on the attack just on the edge of the box. They make their way in. Good slide tackle there to stop that shot from Avanjo. And now it's a shot and it forces a decent save there at the near post from Nego out of Sierra Fellini. So that is their first chance of the game that we've seen on camera here for Mol Fehavar. We do deal with that corner through Paolo. Still 2-0 approaching halftime. And coming up towards halftime, still 2-0. We have a free kick in our favor. De Prisco down to a red heart. That's something we might have to keep an eye out on later in this game he might be off for an early shower just make sure that he's fresh good chance here potentially for Caviglia it comes off both uprights and somehow doesn't find its way in the back of the net but I think that is going to do it for this first half it's been a pretty good half from our 16 shots eight on target they've had a few shots but nothing too threatening and we do take a 2-0 lead into the second half as Galtus on now also picks up a yellow card so as I said Got a few things to keep an eye out on here going in to the second half of this one. But pretty happy with how we are playing. Holding a 2-0 lead will make no changes for now and hopefully extend it throughout the second half. And up to the 63 minute mark, nothing happening so far in the second half. But we're going to make a few substitutions. Zimmerman can come on for Nygaard. He's just tiring a little bit down to a red heart. And we'll also take De Plisco off here. Of course, he was down to a red heart towards half time there. So Corbo can come on for him, but we still hold. A 2-0 lead here with just under a half hour left. And right on the 69-minute mark, we are going to have a free kick here. We might take Caviglia off 
off the back of this highlight as he is on a yellow card and down to a red heart. The free kick's taken. It's a little bit of an average one, but Arneson does keep it in. Corbo with an initial shot falls to Caviglia, who bends that into the right-hand corner just as we're about to take him off, and he does extend the lead to 3-0 in our favour with 20 minutes to go of the away leg, and we are now in a very strong position in this tie going back home for the second leg. We will still make that change, seeing as Caviglia is down to a red heart, but that is a really nice strike like he can do from the edge of the box. The obvious choice to bring someone on for him when we do get the chance to is going to be Melizio Goffi. That will be our last substitution. 3-0 up with 20 minutes left. And inside the final 10 minutes of this one, it's a free kick here to Molfehavar, albeit they do need to play out from deep inside their own half, but we are in a very strong position. They probably need a goal sooner rather than later because it's going to be tough for them back in Iceland, you would like to think, off the back of our performance against Partizani in the second leg of that first qualifying round. We didn't play as well as we did here in the away leg, but it is a chance here for Dardle. Tries to put that into the top right corner, comes off the upright, so it was a decent chance for them there. We've got another highlight shortly off the back of that one, though, and Alejandro Meza with an interception. He is on a yellow card, so hopefully he does keep possession here. He does. Good one, too, between him and Paul Stein, Arneson, Chaka, back to Arneson, lovely ball over there, for Chaka, Traore puts it into the top corner, Brynja Galtason, he played a few of those nice lofted balls over the defence last season, and that is another one to start off this European season, and we are now in an extremely strong position, going into the home leg of this one, we'll just have to check if Chaka Traore was onside there, but lovely ball, good finish there, into the top left corner and it's 4-0 late here in the first leg of the second qualifying round tie. He is well onside there thanks to the centre backs in a great position going into the home leg. And that is full time in the first leg of this second qualifying round game. A very nice 4-0 win, a much better performance than what we did put out in the first leg of the first qualifying round. So that is nice against opposition who should be better. We are taking a very strong 4-0 lead into that second leg. So we'll get through our game that we've got in between now and then and come back shortly for the second leg with a good strong 4-0 advantage. We'll just have a quick look here and see the result from the other tie that we're keeping an eye out on. It is 1-0 to Hammerby. So they slightly hold the advantage in that tie, but we have a strong one and we'll come back shortly for the second leg back in Iceland. And here are the team sheets for the second league. As you can see, we have made a few changes here, partly due to some minor injuries and also some players on a high workload at the moment. We'll just give them a rest with that strong advantage we do have from the first league. So Afosu comes in for Paolo at the back in the midfield. Renzi and Bayer get themselves a start there. And Frederick Larson also coming in for Chaka Traore, who does seem to get quite injury prone often in this game. Also Chatzakis is back on the bench after recovering from his injury. So a few changes, but hopefully we can pick up another one here to keep on building on our coefficient. And with six minutes gone, we have the first highlight of the second leg. Patrick Nygaard trying to put a ball over there potentially for Ian Carlo, but far too much depth on it. And the Mole Fehavar defence do head that back to Rockov in goal for them. But Afosu does win the header. Werner Bay will play that one up. For Benjamin Rubio, and he finishes that from a really difficult angle. Somehow gets that past the goalkeeper. Not great work from him, and that is a brilliant start from us here at the field. Kizvola, we're playing at Filkia's ground today, not the Laugaras Vola as we usually do, but it's a simple long ball over the top there from Werner Bayer. Just catches the goalkeeper out somewhat there at his near post is Benjamin Rubio. It is now 5-0 on aggregate, coming up to the 10-minute mark of the second leg. And up to the 22-minute mark, we've just had a clearance here from Mol Fehavar, but Ian Carlo will tidy things up for us, and we look to launch another attack well and truly in control of this tie. And so far, no updates from the tie. We need to keep an eye out on for the third qualifying round. That is a lovely chip over the goalkeeper there from Frederick Larson in for Chaka Traore today, and he makes it 2-0 on the day, 6-0 on aggregate. That is an assist to go alongside a goal there. For Benjamin Rubio, Arneson plays up to him. He spots the run of Frederick Larson and just lofts this over the goalkeeper nicely. And we are now in a super comfortable position here. Halfway through the first half 
of the second leg. And 10 minutes to go here in this first half of the second leg. Down below, you might be able to see that Hammerby are now 2-0 up on aggregate over Maccabi Tel Aviv. So they have a slight advantage, but it was Mos Behavar there who were on the attack, but we do get position back. Nice ball there from Frederick Larson. It takes a big glance off of Rockoff's hand. Does that header, and Benjamin Rubio gets his second goal of the game, and we should be going into halftime with at least a 3-0 advantage here, and it is now 7-0 on aggregate. This has been very comfortable for us against the team, who apparently a higher reputation than us. It was a header which might not have actually been on target, but that hand from Rockoff absolutely made sure it found its way into the top left corner. 3-0 on the day, 7-0 on aggregate to Volsinger. And it is half time in the second leg. As you saw before, we are in a very strong position. 3-0 on the day, 7-0 on aggregate. No changes to make. We'll need to keep a little bit of an eye out on some players on yellow cards, but very happy with how this is going. And only a few minutes into the second half, we have our first highlight. A Fosu trying to bang one long there for Benjamin Rubio, who is on a hat trick. We'll see if he can bring that up here at some stage in the second half. But our opposition try and get something going here through Evandro down the left-hand side, play a header back there for Dardle. Nice ball squared there, but the strike is over the bar, and we do stay seven up on aggregate. Only a few minutes later, it's potentially another highlight here in the Hungarian side's favour, so they might finally be clicking into gear in this tie, albeit too little too late, but we do want to try and match what we did last season when winning all of our games in Champions League qualifying. That would give us a good leg up in terms of being what we did five years ago for the coefficient this season that we are now in. But it does look like Molfehava have come out of the sheds firing in the second half. It's another good chance for their striker yet again. Blast it over the bar, and we are still 7 up. And up to the 59 minute mark now, we are going to make a substitution. Ian Carlo has picked up a yellow card on a 6.8. We will give Milos Petrovic some time there at right back. Just make sure that we have someone who can potentially get a little bit more stuck in there in defence. A half hour left. Still up by seven goals to nil on aggregate. And about 25 minutes left of this one, we do have a highlight straight off the back of one where Mol Fihavar actually put the ball in the back of the net, albeit one of their players did interfere and was offside, so no damage done. But so far in the second half, all of the highlights have been in their favour. Hopefully that stops here, albeit it wouldn't be too disappointing if that was the case because we are still in a great position 3-0 up on the day 7-0 on aggregate and the ball gets taken away from Milos Petrovic there, and they try and get something going from deep inside their own half as they play that back to Rockoff. They do win the header. Alejandro Meza tries to play that forward to Patrick Nygaard, but they do get the ball back here to Mol Fehavar, but we are in a very strong position now to be making our way through to the third qualifying round of the Champions League yet again, but Nego makes his way down the right-hand side. It's a miss there from Sierra Fellini, and Evandro gets a goal which makes up the one that got talked off not too long ago in game. They get it back to 3-1. They have nothing to play for at all. They still need another six goals to take this one to extra time. It's a mistake there from Sierra Fellini. Doesn't quite get to the ball. Bar post here there for Evandro. They get a goal in the tie, but we are still up 7-1 on aggregate. And only a few minutes later at the 69-minute mark, we're going to make our last few substitutions, a few players here. On red hearts, Afosu is down to a red, so we'll bring on Corbo for him. And Renzi's also on a red heart coffee for him. All our subs used still six goals up on aggregate with only 20 minutes left. And up to the 76 minute mark, we do have another highlight here in the second half. Hopefully, we can get one in our favor and hang on here to make sure that we do win both legs of the second qualifying round tie, as I said earlier. Trying to match what we did from last season. That is a bad tackle there, though. From Aleph, they are down to 10 men. That should make sure that we can hold on to the 7-1 lead and 3-1 lead on the day. And that is full time in this one. We couldn't get anything going against the 10 men there for those last 13 minutes, despite us going attacking for that time. But in the end, we did enough damage in the first half to pick up a 3-1 win. Two goals to Rubio, a goal to Larson, and they both assisted each other's goals as well, going through very comfortably. 7-1 on aggregate. We'll get through the post-match here and just see which of Hamavi or Maccabi Tel Aviv we are going to be playing in tomorrow's episode in the third qualifying round. No matter which team we do come up against, it is going to be an interesting tie. We make our way down a little bit and indeed we are going to be taking on Hamavi. They win the second leg 2-0 and go through 3-0 on aggregate. So that's what we've got coming up tomorrow 
Volsunga versus Hamabi. But we'll come back shortly, update you guys on our result in the league that we had in between these two games and also check in on how the other Icelandic teams have got on so far in Conference League qualifying. And here is that result from the league game that we did play in between those games against Molfehava in Champions League qualifying. It was a very comfortable win at home, as you would expect from us, against bottom of the league. A 4-0 win thanks to an early penalty there to Bjarkason. A Fosu also got one in the first half. And then Gabriel Corbo with a quick fire double in the second half. A very comfortable win there for top of the table against bottom of the table and what that means for the league table at the end. Of today's episodes, we are now 10 points clear with a game in hand in a very strong position to be making it six league titles in a row here at Volsunga. And as you would have been able to see before, indeed, we are taking on Hamabi in the third qualifying round in tomorrow's episode. It's another three-star reputation club, and they have a decent team there, albeit not too many names again that I recognize. So hopefully, it's another team who we can beat. We can make our way through to that Champions League playoff for yet another season. But before we do wrap up today's episode, we are going to have a quick look at how the other Icelandic teams are getting on at the moment in Conference League qualifying. We are in the second qualifying round, halfway through that, just because the Champions League qualifiers do take place a day or so before the Conference League qualifiers. So we'll update this again at the end of tomorrow's episode. But we have got three teams in this round. HK towards the top there are taking on a team from Romania after the first league. Unfortunately, they are 2-1 down, which is not ideal. We make our way down quite a bit further, and you will find the other two Icelandic teams just skipped over one of them there. Nearly, Akranes are actually in a really strong position, having picked up a 3-1 win in the first league over a team from Kazakhstan. So that is good. We've potentially picked up a little bit of coefficient there, and hopefully they can make their way through to the third qualifying round with that 3-1 lead and making our way down just a little bit below that. And you can see Vala Rakjevic are tied with Malibor at the moment. So they also still have a chance to make their way through to the third qualifying round. So at the moment, halfway through the second qualifying round, it already looks like we're in a bit of a stronger position than we have been in the last few years where teams have been getting knocked out in their first round, which has been the second qualifying round quite regularly. We might finally get a team past that and into the third qualifying round and hopefully into a playoff where we hopefully can get a little bit of help for the coefficient this upcoming season but encouraging signs there especially from Akron S and to a slightly lesser extent from Valarakjevic hopefully they can beat Maribor in that second leg and make their way through to the third qualifying round as you would also expect Akron S to do with that advantage HK and a little bit more of Bola being behind a Romanian team, albeit only down by a goal slate. Also could potentially still pull something out there, but we should at least get one team through to the third qualifying round considering the position that Aklanes are in. But that will do it for today's episode. If you did enjoy it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you are enjoying this build a nation series, then do remember to also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow, we will come back for that third qualifying round against Hammerby of Sweden. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.